Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you an American horror film, Jack Frost. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a young kid, listening to a gruesome story about a psycho killer named Jack Frost, and it ends with him finally getting caught. The legend has it that Jack has killed many people, and used to make American pies with human body parts, then the story ends with him getting caught. In the next scene two officers drive a police truck containing Jack in the back, one of the officers gets pissed about the fact that he is the one who has to drive in this blizzard. To cheer him up, the other officer makes fun of Jack. Then we are introduced to Jack, who asks for a smoke from the officer sitting opposite to him. Being the tough guy, Officer Angry tells him to shut up. Then Officer Angry takes in a puff and blows the smoke at him. Jack inhales the smoke and says that it's a filtered cigarette. The scene shifts back to the two officers sitting in the front, and they talk about how Jack got caught. Now it's revealed that with all the FBI chasing the psycho killer Jack Frost, a small town sheriff named Sam caught the killer. Then the two officers hear a thudding sound coming from the back, so they call for Officer Angry. A few moments later, they hear a reply from Officer Angry in the back. But it's Jack who replies to them using Officer Angry's voice. Jack has successfully tackled down Officer Angry and broke his neck. Suddenly another vehicle comes straight towards them, but being not able to see anything on the road, both the vehicles collide on each other and begin rolling over the road. In the process, the back doors open up and allow Jack to escape. A few moments after the crash, one of the vehicles catches up on fire and the acid tank starts getting hot. Sometime later, the officer who was driving wakes up and finds his partner dead. Then he manages to get out of the vehicle, and to his shock, he finds Jack standing in front of him. As Jack walks towards him, the acid tank bursts open and tons of acid pour onto him. Initially, he doesn't look burnt, but as time goes on, he begins to melt. The officer watches in disgust, as Jack's skin melts off his body. Jack shakes in pain, falls to the ground, and continues to melt. Suddenly, Jack's body disappears into the snow, until there's nothing left behind, not even a trace of his smelly hormones. The officer watching this, doesn't know if he needs to shit his pants like a dog, or scream like a little girl. Then the officer uses his microscope fitted in his eye, to see the cells of Jack merge with snow. Then the scene ends with the confused officer, shooting at something throbbing under the snow. Just a few miles away, we are introduced to the small town Sheriff Sam. We see him driving on the road, along with his wife and their son. His wife tells him that he can relax now that he has finally caught the killer. But Sam starts remembering the moment back, when he caught Jack by accident. Sam had accidentally caught Jack, when Jack was coming back from emptying the bladder. After Jack's trial, Sam gets threatened by Jack, that he would kill him and his family. Getting out of the memory, Sam drives past the car crash that Jack was in. He stops by to ask a police officer, but the officer shoes him off. An FBI agent comes to the crash site, and talks to the lone surviving officer. The lone surviving officer says that he saw something moving, and adds that it was partly snow. The detective doesn't buy the smelly bullshit, and walks away from him. The next day, Sheriff Sam walks into his home, and finds his son cooking food for him. Then his son asks him about Jack, and Sam replies that he was a very bad man, but now he's been captured. Then Jack's son shows him what he's cooking, and Sam agrees to eat it for lunch. After getting his lunch from his son, the sheriff leaves the house. Before going to the station, Sheriff Sam stops at the town center, and looks around at all the people's snowmen. The sheriff meets the big man, and tries to take a look at the snowman he made. But the big man doesn't allow it, so the sheriff moves away from the big man. Next, he sees the big man's wife, who has never recovered from the shock, after seeing the big man's little Johnson, so she acts a little loose in the head. Before the big man's wife could talk more and reveal the fact about her husband's little Johnson, the big man comes and stops her. Then he meets the big man's son Billy, and finds him making another snowman. Sheriff Sam tries to talk to Billy, but Billy doesn't talk back much. Then Sheriff Sam meets Tom, and finds him spreading his hormones to the snow woman he's making. Then Tom teaches Sheriff Sam some geometry, and this makes Sheriff Sam speechless. After the weird encounter, Sheriff Sam meets Tom's father, Paul. But before Paul could start talking about more geometry, Sheriff Sam takes his leave. After dealing with the weird town, Sheriff Sam finally reaches the station. He enters the station, and his hairy colleague informs him that somebody has died, so Sheriff Sam rushes to the spot, and finds an old man frozen to death. He tells the two officers, who were already on the spot to check in with the town's doctor, 
and also tells them to find if anybody new has passed through the town. Then Sheriff Sam calls the FBI, and investigates if Jack has been killed in the accident. The line connects to the FBI agent from the car crash, and Sheriff Sam asks him about Jack. The FBI agent assures that Jack has been killed, and ends the call. After ending the call with Sheriff Sam, the FBI agent talks to the scientist in front of him, and tells him that the acid has worked successfully. In the next scene, Sheriff Sam's wife comes home after buying groceries. After going in, she finds her son making a huge mess in the kitchen. So she tells him to go outside, and complete the snowman's face. So her son grabs the carrots from her hand, and goes out to the snowman. He puts in two stones for the snowman's eyes, and a carrot for the nose. Right before he could finish the mouth, the big man's son, Billy, comes and bullies him. Billy gets pissed off, and hits the snowman's head. Suddenly, the snowman pushes Billy down, and runs a sled over his neck. The sled chops off Billy's head, and the remaining boys run away, saying that the sheriff's son killed Billy. In the next scene, Billy's body is taken in a body bag, and is handed in another small bag. The big man is seen yelling at the sheriff, saying that his son had killed Billy. The big man's wife surprisingly stays calm, and continues to tell her husband to calm down. Being tired of this bullshit, the big man leaves the place. Later that night, Sheriff Sam looks at a few paper clippings, and remembers Jack's words. His wife comes and consoles him. Suddenly they hear a noise outside, and Sheriff Sam goes to check it out. As soon as he opens the door, he finds Paul. Paul tells him that he came by to drop the bag of salt, and continues to talk. Sheriff Sam tells him to put the bag in the corner, and slams the door in Paul's face. The big man gets upset to stay in the house, and heads out for some smoke. He keeps the smoke pipe in his mouth, and lights a match. Suddenly, he hears a voice asking him for a smoke. The big man gets scared, and initially tries to laugh it off. Hearing the voice again, the big man takes the axe beside him, and arms himself. The big man tries to find him, but suddenly, the snowman beside the big man grabs the axe from him, and shoves it down the big man's throat. A few moments later, the big man's wife finds water puddles on the floor, and thinks that the big man's little Johnson might have leaked. She carefully steps over the puddle, and goes to sit on her couch to drink tea. Suddenly the Christmas tree's lights switch on, and switch off. Right when she gets up to check it out, the snowman grabs her, and begins covering her with the lights. Then it takes an ornament off the tree, and puts it in her mouth. It smashes the ornament inside the mouth, and begins repeatedly hitting her head on the box full of ornaments. The broken glass pieces get pierced into her face, and her face begins to bleed. Then the snowman ties her to the Christmas tree, takes the star, and puts it into the top of her head. The camera then zooms back, revealing the gruesome murder. A few moments later, Paul walks into the house to give them a bag of salt. To his shock, he finds the big man's wife's dead body. Suddenly he hears a voice, and runs outside the house while shitting his pants on the way. Sheriff Sam gets notified, and comes to the scene with two other officers. Later Sheriff Sam heads back to the station, and finds the FBI agent waiting for him. The FBI agent introduces himself, but lies about the scientist as another agent from the FBI under the alias Mr. Balls. Sheriff Sam takes them to the murder scene, and Mr. Balls uses an instrument to measure the hormones left in the puddle back at the big man's house. After measuring the hormones left in the puddle, Mr. Balls tells the FBI agent that it can transform its structure at will. He further adds that it transformed itself into a water state, and entered through the back door. In the next scene, Sheriff Sam rounds up everyone from the town and the church, and asks all of them to stay there for the next 24 hours for their safety. Then he heads out, and finds Paul speaking non-stop bullshit after shitting his pants. Sheriff Sam tries to calm him down, but the FBI agent punches him in the face, and knocks him out. Sheriff Sam tasks one of his officers to look after Paul, and the other fat officer to go to Paul's house and gather up his supplies. Unfortunately, while on the way to Paul's house, the fat officer spots the snowman in the middle of the road, holding a stop sign. So he goes to the police cruiser's boot, and gets a shovel. But to his shock, he finds the snowman missing in a puddle of water. The fat officer begins to shit his pants, and goes to put back the shovel. When he closes the police cruiser's boot, he finds the snowman sitting in the driver's seat. The snowman runs the police cruiser over the fat officer, and squishes his fat body and his shit. Back in the other part of the town, the big man's daughter and Tom sneak into Sheriff Sam's house to let go of their hormones. After going inside, both of them start removing the shit ton of clothes they are wearing. The big man's daughter goes further into the house, and Tom pours a drink for her. Suddenly he hears a sound outside, and crouches down. 
Then he slowly opens the door, and suddenly gets punched in the face by the snowman. Tom stabs the snowman multiple times using a knife, but it's of no use. Sadly, he gets killed after the snowman launches a sharp ice cone into the boy's shoulder and head. The big man's daughter gets into the bathtub, and begins bathing. The snowman gets himself into the bathtub, and freezes the water around her. Not being able to escape, the big man's daughter gets abused by the snowman's carrot. Eventually, she dies in the horrifying process, and the snowman puts back his carrot in place. Back at the sheriff's station, Sheriff Sam and the two FBI agents discuss the way to bring in reinforcements. Suddenly, they hear a police cruiser outside. So they all go to check it out, and Sheriff Sam finds the inside of the police car soaking wet. Suddenly the snowman appears, and the FBI agent shoots its head off. But soon, the snowman puts back his head in place. Before the snowman can attack them, they all rush inside the station. Now it's revealed that Jack Frost is still alive, and that he had transformed into the snowman, because of a chemical that a genetics company had produced. Now Jack enters the police station by transforming himself into a water state, and tries to attack them. They blow up the station using the aerosol cans, and attempt to blow him up. But Jack pulls back himself together, and makes everybody flee the scene. Sheriff Sam formulates a plan to destroy Jack. He gathers up the A-team, and stands in front of the church. Jack makes an entrance, and everyone gathers up, and uses blow dryers to make Jack go into the furnace. The heat melts Jack, and everybody thinks that he's dead. But after some time, Jack condenses back and wounds the FBI agent. Then he goes into the body of Mr. Balls. Sheriff Sam takes his son along with him, and gets into a car. Then Mr. Balls walks out awkwardly from the church. So Sheriff Sam goes to Mr. Balls and asks him if everything is alright. Suddenly, Mr. Balls' throat bulges up, and he spits out a carrot. Then he begins vomiting the snowman out of his mouth, and dies on the spot. Seeing this, Sheriff Sam rushes into his car and Jack enters the car turning himself into liquid. Sheriff Sam and his son escape the car and, and Sheriff Sam throws the oatmeal his son had made for him at the beginning of the film. This burns Jack's head in half, and Sheriff Sam finds out that his son had put antifreeze in the oatmeal, for his father to not get cold. Paul rams Jack using a truck, as revenge for killing his son. Sheriff Sam then tells him to fill the bed of his truck using antifreeze. Then Sheriff Sam gets chased by Jack throughout the halls of the town's church. After a long cat and mouse game Jack catches up to him, and drives an icicle into Sheriff Sam's chest. Luckily Sheriff Sam doesn't get killed. Paul arrives just in time with a truck full of antifreeze. Sheriff Sam pushes Jack along with him into the antifreeze solution, and begins drowning him in the solution. Jack melts in the antifreeze, and eventually gets killed. The next day, the antifreeze is poured back into many containers, and the people bury it deep underground in the town. The movie ends with one of the containers bubbling up, signifying that Jack is still alive, and would come back for the second sequel. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.